Hello everyone, welcome back to Sharp Cuts. My name is Garrett May alongside Josh Nickel, as always, and welcome back to the show. I'm coming in spicy today, Josh. Look at you looking stupid over there with your silly sweater and your dumb hat. What are you doing? You're not prepared for what's coming at you tonight. I'm hype. Anyways, I'm wearing my speak, 8x8 John. sweater. It's the most comfortable thing I own, so I'm definitely prepared to take your lashing in my comfortable, stylish sweater. Good. Sit back and relax, because here it comes, Nickel. Anyways... Should we question for you, John? Well, we're not going to name any names, but we got absolutely bailed on t- for today's episode. Full bail, and we had a hero coming in to substitute. So we're not going to name any names, but here's what we are going to do. Comment down below who you think bailed on us this week. We want to hear your thoughts about who who potentially bailed on us. Because someone bailed on us, and you will never get it, but... We want to see you try. Is that fair, Josh, or is that harsh? Should we give hints? I, no. I want to see what people... Okay. Your first thought. First thought, somebody bailed on you. Who is it? Call them out. Clown of the week. They didn't even do anything wrong other than you thought they probably bailed on us. Like, that's the perfect move. Life happens. Okay. Anyways, we should probably introduce our hero of a guest on last minute... Not only last minute, because Josh, you're always last minute, last minute of the last minute, subbing in to join us. Please welcome to the show, Tynan Gannett. How you doing, buddy? Welcome to the show, eh? What's up, Tynan? Oh, I'm so, so good. So excited to be here. That was not believable at all, Tynan. It sounds like this is an absolute chore. And listen... I, your coach is here on the call, okay? It is a little bit of an awkward situation when coach calls you up and says, hey, can you come on my podcast? You can't exactly say no. So, like, are you actually excited to be here or just doing it because you want to impress Josh? It, it, it wasn't even a call. It was a, a DM on Instagram. So, uh, I'm, I'm surprised it. Josh, you slipped into Tynan's it. DMs? <laughs> I, I think he maybe feel, felt obligated because for context, like, yeah, usually it's day of we find a guest, Garrett. This was like 10 minutes within recording time. It was like, uh, what are you doing? <laughs> well, listen, glad you had nothing better to do tonight, Tynan, than to hang with us because we appreciate it. And hopefully you do too. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, letting Tynan know what you think of him. And nobody's going to comment, Tynan, so no pressure, man. Um Anyway, for context, Tynan, Josh told me very little. I'm going to read aloud what Josh said about you. Um, just or is that don't, don't do that. that? Is that don't, don't is that, do that's that. harsh? No, I, you didn't say much. Read it, you read just it. said read it. He's he from wants Nova to know Scotia. What his is. Yeah, I he's do. from Nova Scotia and first year on our beach team. What like what even? It's not embarrassing. You get nervous there, Josh. I was going to read something else out. Did you want me to like list all his accomplishments that like he played for Tigers volleyball club? He was actually playing field lacrosse at SMU before coming to the beach national team tryout. He's a top four at Canada games. He, anyone who was at the St. Catherine games would have been a big fan of the Nova Scotia boys. So th- there's a lot to brag about here, but I mean, I feel like we're behind and we got a le- last minute guest here, Garrett. So I think we should just start the show versus grilling me on my inability to get guests and to provide a proper bio to you. I'm hyping your ability to get guests. And by the way, you asked if that was not a hype. You asked if I wanted you to list his accomplishments, and you didn't give me a chance to answer, and you just did it. I was going to say no, but now I'm glad that I heard his accomplishments. So, Tynan, welcome to the show. Is Tynan, Tynan, are you going to say a single bad thing or disagree with Josh this entire episode? We'll have to see. I really, I really, I I can't say that now, because I don't know what he's going to say. But uh, We've had a few battle of wits already, Garrett. I feel like this is just going to be us normal on the internet. That's all this is. This is... Perfect, perfect fence sitting taught, I'm sure, by Josh Nickel. Uh, is that what you teach in practice all day, Josh? Or just how to sit on the fence? Yeah, well, we spent a whole session on that today, actually, an hour and a half of just like dodging questions and, and being polite. Okay. So let's get into it. And we, we scheduled a show and topics for a guest, and we now have a substitute guest. So, you know, a moral struggle for the show. 10 minutes before is do we change up all the topics or do we just let it ride? So we're just going to let it ride. We're going to go with the same topics and see if you can guess who the, uh, who bailed on us. But I mean, you'll never get it. But anyways, Tynan, here's a crucial question. That's going to determine really the rest of your volleyball career, but mostly just the rest of this show is, do you consider yourself a technical guy? Technical in what sense of the word? How do you mean it? Is it up to my 
presentation? Gosh, way to throw it right back at me because I'm also not prepared for that. I was just going to see what you were going to say. But it sounds like we need to think about it a little more. Okay, technical in a volleyball sense. Like when you think about the sport, do you think about it in a manner of technique, systems, uh, a technical way, the w way that you can describe this and systemize it? Or I, what would be the opposite of that? The opposite of that would be you don't look at any of that stuff. You focus on the energies, personalities, emotion, that sort of thing. Um, if, if those are on, I don't think they're on exact opposites, but two, two ends of a scale, um, where do you think you fall on that? I mean, I find personally, I think it's a, a balance of both, I guess, where, uh, it's volleyball, I think is a very technical sport. Um, you need a, a level of technique to be able to do all the other stuff. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't, uh, all the other stuff's very important, having energy and, and systems and whatnot, but if you don't have uh, some technique first uh, to build off of, then you can't really can't really do anything with with all the other stuff. Okay, again, sitting on the fence, like playing it playing it straight down the middle. Josh, would you agree with that, or do you find yourself more of a technical guy? So, Garrett, it's funny you ask that because uh, I got in an argument with Aaron Cadu, who once he kind of steered me the other way in this conversation because we were talking about your crush team and, and about. Uh, not the lack of coaching you guys get, but like the freedom to find solutions to do it your own way. Like there's not one way to do an arm swing. I think there's like two or three things that like are, are pillars of the skill, but everyone can have individual where Aaron basically described like, okay, you're in the, the last set of either indoor or beach. It's 13 all. Do you want the technical guy who holds his platform perfectly and his fingers are pointed the right way and all this stuff? Or do you want the one who's like mentally tough and competitive and is going to find a way? And I was kind of like, well, maybe you want the mentally tough athlete in that situation. It doesn't mean that you downplay the technique but i think i think sometimes in volleyball we think there's one way to do something i don't think there's one way to do something i think there's a lot of athletes who have like find a way so uh, i would say i i'm i still respect the technique but i'm on the side of the spectrum that says like we're playing a physical game and you got to problem solve and you got to compete to to find a way am i seriously gonna am i seriously just for this am i gonna end up on the technical side of the spectrum in today's episode are you two absolutely serious right now I don't think that's possible. So you should just fold up and agree with us. Yeah, like what? Are you are you absolutely serious right now that Tynan's going to ride the fence and Josh, you're going to go you're going to go my way on this. So can I give a Garrett May story? So Garrett, when you were quite young, a story you about me high school, or a story maybe, like maybe first year. You know, maybe it was first year university. I got you to come guest spot at a beach uh, certification clinic. I don't know if you remember this, a beach blast. Oh, and yeah. Dustin Reed was a facilitator. And Dustin did a great job, like, setting you up in situations and talking. And uh, one of the coaches asked a question about chasing line. And you gave an explanation of, like, what the technical way was and what the footwork should be. And Dustin's like, okay, let's try a few. And you dug four straight balls. And you used two, if not three, different footworks to get to the ball. And after that, we're just kind of like, okay, getting to the ball is more important than did he take a, a right, left, right right or did he go left right left or did he stutter step or did he lunge it was kind of like okay Garrett got to all four of those balls and used two or three different techniques to do so so did he dig with two hands or one hand it's like well I dug towards the net so what's the problem like so I, I think I would be shocked if you're a technical guy Garrett I think you're more of a find a way guy yeah like what an absolute crazy move to have me at a, at a situation like that and what an absolute burial of me in that moment for anybody really paying attention, being like, hey, what's the technique for this? I say it and then do something that was not that thing. Yes. Like what an absolutely useless, <laughs> useless demo that I'm giving. So thanks for bringing that up, Josh. Seriously, with your stupid headphones and your dumb hat. Gosh, man. That's a great Way to bury me. Get on the way. But, okay. Let me, let, me, let me give you this situation then. Okay. You got a kid coming in, playing. They have no idea how to play volleyball. What's the first thing you go through? What's the first What's the first thing you go through in volleyball? Does that make it the most important? I, I don't know, but if it's not if the most important thing isn't first, maybe that's a deeper question we got to explore. Well, no, you can't be mentally tough if you don't know how to bop the ball. I understand that you need to acquire the skill, but once you have an understanding of what you're supposed to do, do I care that like their their platform looks a certain way or that their thumbs are together or they point their wrist down? Like I don't really care. Like actually 
friend of the show who I'm going to throw him under the bus right now. Tynan has one of the worst platform grips I think I've ever seen. Like, I don't know if you could demonstrate how you hold your hands, Tynan, but it is the most unique, Garrett. It was not something you would teach an athlete, but Tynan is, what, 20 years old and on the national team? So are we going to coach him to hold his hands or are we just going to let him pass pissed. balls? Tynan's pissed right now. You call him out. I will, I will not He's probably pissed. like, what? What do I do with my hands? They're they're out there, man. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, don't be putting your hands in a platform, Tynan. But okay, Josh, see, this is what I end up doing on the show is I take somebody's point and I take it to the extreme to really show how it's wrong, which is not really good logic, but it's it, it makes sense. Okay, so if the if if we're all about mental toughness, why aren't you taking the 12, 10, 8-year-old who's starting volleyball, forget platform, get right into the mental toughness piece. Get right in, bury them right away, challenge them immediately, get right into that action right away with them. That's how you're going to make a good volleyball player, not going through the platform. No, I think that goes against the spirit, the spirit of coaching and the spirit of coaching is to put them in a situation to be successful. And I don't think they're going to be successful if they don't know how to execute like the sport itself. Like that would be like saying like work on mental toughness and and, and pick another sport, baseball, but they don't know how to catch and throw. If they don't know how to do those things, it doesn't matter how mentally tough you are. So there is a foundation there. But once they've acquired the skill or understand that like your brain wants to be efficient, Gary, your brain like builds maps where I think you have to move on to the technical, tactical, like you got to be worried about like scoring points more so than like how your hands looked in that situation okay okay so let's really put this to the test then tynan you're a first year player you really have the most recent up-to-date info on josh's style and what he does so how often does josh in practice or in coaching go into technical discussions well See this. This kind of goes to uh, the story he told about you, actually. Where uh, okay, why does it come back to me? Why does it come back to me? Were you in that something, session? <laughs> something that he's he's introduced rather recently is uh, he uh, he's he's gone away from a, an explicit technical uh, approach to finding uh, uh, to to like one generic or one uh, one specific solution to uh, to every every skill um and i can't remember the wording exactly but uh the uh the repeatability of uh a a successful action is not uh not about the process of repeating a solution but repeating the process of finding a solution something something if you close that has nothing to do with garrett that has to do with rob gray and motor learning i'm glad you gave garrett credit for motor learning the guy's never no no it's absolutely (laughs) Credit it's me the, for that. The story that you told about Garrett, though, where he told his technical thing and then did three different footworks. And so he found. Okay, he way found to three circle it back to that time. Are you serious? You're going to call me out again for that? No, he found three different solutions to get the ball up, and they were all technically adequate, I guess. Well, that's what I was doing, Josh, is I was just demonstrating that I knew how to do what I said, and then, oh, here's a few more bonus. It's really. What I was going, right? Is that? Oh, yeah. Hold on. But Tyne, to circle back, you've been around long enough to know that Josh has moved away from an approach and towards another approach. And what was all that mess of words that you threw out there? Was that a Josh quote? Oh, it's written on the whiteboard. He sees it's it every day. On the whiteboard. I'm sure, I'm sure that could uh, have a picture taken of it. But uh, yeah, I'm not an Instagram sure I... post of that. So, Garrett, the problem I have in our training environment sometimes is we have some vets or people who've been around a long time and they like to pass on their guidance to the athletes, sometimes unsolicited advice, which is my least favorite type of advice, but it's still given. And I like to stand off because I don't have all the answers, Garrett. But when somebody gives a new athlete advice that they'd be better if they did this or they should do this, I kind of get annoyed being like, no, they have to find their own way. So to counter that, I went a little over the top, Garrett, and I talked about motor learning. And our theory is like we watch video on Monday of maybe some athletes who excel in certain areas and we look at them do it and then we look at how we do it and, and we try to find like we're not trying to copy the best players we're trying to like steal what works for us and then we'll go into an activity or a drill and like rep it out a bunch of times but sometimes a, an, an athlete or another coach in the facility will tell a new athlete something that i think is absolute baloney but instead of confronting them and saying don't listen to that joker i just create an opportunity for Tynan to try a few things and whatever work will stick here it doesn't have to be oh this the josh to, to do this or garrett said to do this it's whatever works 
best for him. I don't have to own it. But uh, let's just say, Garrett, there are some people in our sport who think that there's one way to do something, and it is a bunch of baloney. Okay. Well, here's some advice for you then, Josh, is how about you don't interrupt Tynan and let him give an actual <laughs> answer before speaking? Just talk, talk, just talking for him. Like, how about that? He was struggling. He was, struggling. <laughs> he was trying to give credit to you. You were and then, struggling like, to oh, the credit, you, you, And then you, you had his back, Josh. Start, but then fumbled the quote that we read every day and then went back. Like, I, I couldn't take it anymore, Garrett. It was plus I was nervous about what he was going to say about me. It's a Josh, pretty long Oh, quote. that's what that was it. <laughs> It's a pretty long quote. It takes up four lines of the whiteboard. So pardon me for not, not remembering it word for word. <laughs> you're, I mean, you're absolutely forgiven by me, but I don't know if your coach is going to forgive you for that. Thank, I don't thank know. you, Garrett. Thank are we you, prepared Garrett. to name names for who are the bozos giving unsolicited advice? Who's the league leader in unsolicited advice? Are we prepared <laughs> to do that? Or, I mean, Josh, you probably can't do that. Like you probably they're can't not all do that. bozos, Garrett. I think they're people who care and want to help and think they have experience. So I'd not think they have experience. They definitely have experience. It's just uh, I just think sometimes they they overstep trying to say like, oh, you should do it this way or this is the only way. Like or you know, because I've played on World Tour, Garrett. I've seen some things, and let me tell you, young man, like that stuff kind of irks me a little bit. Okay, so I See, should cross advice, out my. I don't think the advice is ever the advice is ever unsolicited because. I can either take it or not. No, uh, unsolicited is based on how it was delivered. You can always take it or leave yeah. it, but the unsolicited is like you're sitting there eating lunch and somebody comes over and says, hey, if you set the ball from this position, you're going to get called every time. Or you're like, oh, thanks. I was hoping you would come by and tell me that. I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Like, so basically what we're saying is I should scratch off my other topic that I had, which was just to give a bunch of advice to Tynan and see how he received it. That would be a bad topic to do after this discussion. Instead of like those uh, Players Tribune letter to my younger self, this is a letter to Tynan about all the things he would change about yourself. <laughs> Comment down below your best unsolicited advice for Tynan. Oh, no. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what we terrible. get. We'll get, we'll get nothing. That's we'll gonna get be absolutely nothing. It'll be how to hold your platform correctly, the correct way how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, here's my best wor here's my best worst unsolicited advice for you, Tyne. And you defender or blocker? I'm a blocker. You a blocker? Okay. You got it. Here's my best worst unsolicited advice. So just mold this over. Okay. You gotta be like definitely faking out, sidestep, jumping into angles, jumping back. Like the more undisciplined you are, the less they know where you're gonna be and the more blocks you're gonna get. That is a process towards a possible solution what? maybe Good answer. Josh? have you brainwashed this guy josh what kind of answer is that you're being respectful tynan but it's my best worst advice i don't know if brainwash is the right word i think we encourage learning and trying stuff so maybe in a way that is a little brainwashy where even today at practice uh tynan got josh binstock who was a guest to practice because he's training for an event and get this scared i don't know how often you've seen this the fake peel come back and block it almost worked too. I got well, but, both my hands no, no, on it. But that means it didn't work. Through. But it almost worked. Did you not get them on that play? It didn't work. Oh, he, okay. No, I, I full, remember he was full confused. Block, full block, but on our side. Wait, wait, wait. Just, you wait. You tried it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were saying Josh <laughs> tried it and it almost worked. Oh, okay. No, I have seen that before. But you definitely got to block it then if you're going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, There's some unsolicited advice. Maybe you should try blocking the ball next time. Oh, that's great advice. I sh yeah, I should here's some advice. Here's, a, here's one. How about instead of faking, like faking the peel and going block, you show two guys back. Like you show both on D and then you just run up late for the block. I mean, that's better, right? That's... Is worse than your worst unsolicited advice. <laughs> if I may. That's that's my that's now my best worst unsolicited advice. That it I is. got I mean I we can go really bad though. You should just forfeit every game because it's really a great way to lull the entire world into a false sense of security. I mean that would re really be terrible if you did well, that. Well, I mean if everybody makes playoffs, why not just forfeit all of pool play, save your energy? If oh, if gosh. everybody agrees.
you're still on that, Josh. You're still on that train. I can tell where we're headed tonight. Okay. Well, so if we're <laughs> if we're gonna place ourselves on the scale then of technical, it sounds like you two nerds are on the non-technical side. Oh, well, Garrett, I think we're playing a physical sport. Like, there's there's some obvious ones. Like, there's a reason we don't run backwards. Like, there's some physical things that you need to do that I think are optimal. But I don't, like I said, I don't think there's, like, one way to do things. Like, obviously, Tynan hits with his left hand, and it drives me bananas. But, like, one out of every five times it works. So I'm not going to tell him to stop hitting two balls with his left hand because he's a blocker on the right side. But anyways, like, I think there are some Tynan's optimal left things that... Tynan writes with his left hand but wants to strike a volleyball with his right hand. It's actually quite unique. I write with my left. I eat with my left. Um, but I do all sports with my right and from my right side. Okay. Well, yeah, like, I mean, figure that out. <laughs> You're saying that? I have. It's working oh, for anyways. me so far. I think there's like there's pillars of each skill that like I mean if you're gonna pass with your platform you should have space away from your body you should be trying to push the ball high like I think there's things that you should do to, to perform the skill I just don't think there's like a, a laundry list of like things that you have to do like, there's mm. probably three or four things each skill that like make sense like Garrett I know you're trying to take the other argument here but I know for a fact your dot your dad taught you how to handset and you're one of the best handsetters on the beach and the only feedback he gave you was set the ball with no spin Garrett so you can't tell me that you do you buy into this oh your right foot should be forward when you're handsetting no it's your left foot forward no you should take four small steps no your thumb should be in your eyes or you should be drinking a two liter of coke or whatever coaches say you were just like yeah. okay I'll set the ball with no spin yeah no, I'm not trying to pretend I'm anything other than what I am, which is absolutely anti-technique. But I think you make a good point, Josh. You're, you're somewhat convincing me of your of your nonsense that you give to these guys, which is I, I feel like I'm drinking the two liter Kool Aid. Forget Coke, but I mean yeah. I, I don't know. I gotta I gotta snap out of it a little bit. I'm getting a little bit brainwashed here by your because I did do that a lot. Is like and as an adult, I find I do that too. Is like finding solutions for things. So like when you have a clear goal like that, you can work around it so maybe the lesson is set clear goals and we'll help each other find a way to find great solutions to those goals so on this show can we build into a say instead of drinking the kool-aid drinking the chocolate milk because leah monkhouse and i were discussing today it would be amazing if the beach national team were sponsored by chocolate milk because it's delicious so can we just like build it into like a, an in-brand in commercial thing until we like speak it into existence garrett i want to sponsor really bad and i think chocolate milk would be like an amazing start for us i support that fully yeah, like, you two have no idea what you're talking about. Like, chocolate milk would be great, but it's not a brand. What brand is going to sponsor us? What, we're going to go to the Chocolate Milk Society? No, that doesn't exist. All, all Who's going to sponsor us? Nielsen's? What's the brand? What's yeah, like, which brand? There's a bunch of them. I'll take any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take Nest Quick or whatever it's called. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, if you're willing to sell your your language choices to a sponsor to get that money, that sweet sweet money, Josh, I mean, you should you should tell the administration that because they say we're gonna mandate that our head coach says instead of drinking the Kool Aid, drinking the Nielsen's delicious chocolate milk. I mean, could be worth some money. So speaking of technical and speaking of selling out, I was once at a coaching clinic and the coach was explaining footwork and he actually used in the sentence. And when you take that next step with your Mizuno, like he actually like plugged in what shoes you should be wearing. And I thought that was that was really clever. And it worked because to this day, I remember it. And that was at least like 10 years ago. So I think I could sell it at that point where like and when you take your time out, Garrett, and you drink that that Nestle quick, make sure you're talking <laughs> strategy about who you want to serve the next ball to. Yeah, true, man. I mean, Volleyball Canada is sponsored by uh, by uh, Mizuno now. So, I mean, instead of move your feet advice you're giving to passers, it's move those Mizunos. So, I mean, you know, what else would it be? So, I mean, please sponsor us Mizuno. Like, throw some of that sweet, sweet cash our way. We'll take it. I mean, we on Sharp Cuts, we will sell any of our word choices for money. Josh and I haven't discussed that, but... We're just having a quick meeting right now. I mean, it seems like that's the policy. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Player of the week okay, could great. be the the Kia player of the week. Like it could be anything. Like oh. <laughs> Kia, Kia. We're gonna get a car company to sponsor us. No way is that gonna happen. <laughs> but anyways, moving on. We got everybody's favorite segment of the week. It's players and clowns of the week. Let's go, boys. 
Players and Clowns of the Week. I got. I, I can't remember mine. I'm just, geez, I'm forgetting. I'm a forgetful guy. So who should start? Who's prepared? Are we all prepared? Did you give Tynan the warning before that? It was last minute. We don't know if he's ready. Once he agreed to be on the show, I was like, oh, by the way, you also need some award winners. <laughs> it was very last minute. I had a couple minutes notice to, to do some research and come up with a couple ideas. Okay. Well, to give you some more time to, to filter that out, I'll start. Because um, mine's mine's just pretty standard. So my player of the week has got to go to Jay Tremonti. Um, Jay is the head coach of the Douglas men's volleyball team. Jay, um, we had a tough, you know, they, they had a tough weekend at the provincials in the, uh, PAC West, um, you know, ended up finishing fourth. So it was a tough weekend, but here's why Josh, and just, just think about this for a second. So the provincials was out in Cranbrook. So Cranbrook is about an hour and a half flight or like something like a 12 hour drive, um, or longer. I don't even know the amount of hours that that drive is, but it's a long drive. Um, and so the boys took the bus there, the assistant coaches took the flights there so that they could work and stuff like that. So Jay took the bus with the boys there as the head coach, responsible guy. So that was a huge, huge move for the boys. Then we're heading home. Assistant coaches get the flight home. Jay stays on the bus with the boys, but get this, Josh, bad weather hits in BC. We get a big snowstorm on the way home. So the boys get stuck on the bus, the highway closed, they can't go. So instead of 12 hours, it ends up taking them over a day or like into this long into the second day to get home. They had to stay overnight in a hotel. So it was just like an extended thing. Whereas the rest of the coaches were at home, we got the flight. So player of the week to Jay for just suffering through with the boys after a, after a tough provincials weekend. Um, whereas I'm not gonna name any names, Josh. But there were some other coaches, head coaches, on the flight with us, and their teams prob their teams weren't there. So how were they getting home? Probably on the bus. So Jay, you're an ultimate bro for helping us out. So player of the week, Jay. Congrats on a on a tough season, but uh, it was a blast. So that's my player of the week. No, no part of you when he's like, I'll take the bus with the guys. No part of you is like, oh, if the guys are on the bus, I'll take the bus. You're like, yeah, no, I'll meet you guys there. Well, like for me, it's the difference of like the two days of work, right? So fair, I, I, fair. I really can't go otherwise. So, you know, I didn't mean to, I, I guess that's a big league move. Sorry, Jay. I like her being like, ah, I can't come otherwise. So like, you know, it's got to work. So I'm glad it did. If it didn't, I wouldn't have been able to be there. But uh, yeah, it was never an option. So, um, but uh, I thought about it, but I, I don't know, like can't do it. That's a great uh, player of the week. And that shows just how on terrible I am sometimes. I didn't realize you guys have to travel that far for league play. Like 12 hours on a bus is, is pretty gnarly. In the OCAA, we, we don't do that unless, ooh, maybe St. Clair to Boreal is a mission to get to. Yeah, so imagine the guys from Vancouver Island University up in Nanaimo. So they take a several hour drive from Nanaimo to the ferry. Well, or the they a, a drive to the ferry, get on the ferry with the bus. Then over, then got to drive that hour. It's like even further than it is for the group that's in the lower mainland. So, yeah, they they I mean, and they didn't fly, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah, some tough travel out there. So, uh, I mean, players of the week to all those guys too, taking that that long ass bus ride. So, yeah, player of the week. Well done. Okay. Well done. I'll, I'll, I'll go next because I still don't think Tynan's prepared. So, uh, I worked backwards on this one, Garrett. There's so many conferences and playoffs and finals and stuff going on, but the upset that caught my eye was Mount Royal, who was having an amazing season. I think they were ranked top five in the nation for most of the year. They lose to crosstown rival University of Calgary. And I thought, oh, maybe it's because, you know, they played a, a pretty big school and they brought a bunch of fans and maybe like. Calgary turned Mount Royal into home court advantage. I think that was a little naive to me, Garrett. Uh, Lewis Kunstman, who started the year off as a middle, uh, they've moved him to the left side, which was probably an experiment in the coach's office where they're like, this is going to work. Yeah, I, I think it's going to work. So on the first night when Calgary won 3-0, he went 15, three errors on 19 attempts, hitting 632. He also contributed four digs, a block for 17 total points. And then the next night when Mount Royal came out firing, Calgary took it in five, 21 kills, five errors, 38 attempts, hit 421. 
one. Uh, 11 digs in that match, four blocks for 25 and a half points. So uh, a big middle from Germany originally. They're like, eh, maybe he could play left side, which is every middle's dream, let's be honest. And it turns out he can. I think uh, according to volumetrics and some stats, they made the, the, the switch there in second semester, and it definitely paid off. So Lewis Kunstman of the University of Calgary, you are my player of the week. Big upset. Calgary is now in the final four of Canada West. Yeah, I mean, congrats and great explanation, Josh. But one thing to think about with with this guy is that he has a, a hilariously dangerous name for demonetization um, on this channel. So I, I believe it's actually pronounced Kuntzman. Could be. Because we need to be careful with a name like that. It's with a K. It's with a K, right? And a, and a U? K-U-N-S-T-M-A-N-N. He is from Germany. Yeah, Kunstmann. Kun, Kun, Kunstmann. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, because it's just, you know, just to not be mistaken with any other other words out there that are not to be named. Um, so congrats to Kunstmann. Yeah, I mean, we were watching the stats and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, great performance. Good for you, Josh. Combing the stats. Low-hanging fruit, though, I'm going to be honest. going to be honest. Low-hanging fruit there with the stats, man. Big performance. Did, Big did performance. you watch the games? Uh, I did not watch that game all the way through, but as soon as I saw some of these stats line, I logged into Volumetrics because I have access, Garrett. I don't know if you've ever heard of Volumetrics. It's the greatest website ever. I spent a good like half hour, 40 minutes of just watching clips of him playing middle, playing left side, hitting out of the pipe. They, they, they move him around. They use him really well, but I'm glad that he's playing left side because at the start of the year, uh, there was a couple matches where he got like six attempts, and by the end of the year, he's getting 38 and hitting over 400. So, I mean... Credit to the, the University of Calgary coaching staff for rolling the dice and be like, yeah, this is totally going to work. Every middle should play left side. And it did. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, good for you for going on Volumetrics to uh, get the info and actually see it. I mean, we appreciate that sort of integrity on the show, Josh. And yes, how dare you? I do have access to Volumetrics, Josh. What are you trying to big league me when I'm, I'm in the cool kids club now, Josh? So watch it. Okay? Well... Get in there, use your keyboard shortcuts so you can be entertained really quickly. There's, you there's and a your lot of stupid headphones and sweater and hat back there. Look at that dumb painting in the back row, too. Hey, hey where's, where's your hat? Don't you usually wear the same outfit every episode? Yeah, I change it up because I'm trying to be interesting, <laughs> unlike you, boring basic. No. I'm... I love this hat, but if somebody were to sponsor the show, I would wear their hat. But I do love oh. a good new era hat. Everything's for sale on Sharp Guts, <laughs> 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 including our dignity. Okay, Tymon, <laughs> player of the word, player of the week. What do you got? Well, if you uh, if you thought Josh's was a low hanging fruit, you'll uh, you'll you'll like mine because I'm going off board a little bit. Um, I've got to give it to um, the one and only Robbie Ball Control Bobby Kemp uh, <laughs> for uh, coming <laughs> coming into uh, to Downsview Park and. Uh, Showing up, showing out with uh, me, myself, and I to uh, play for exactly one week uh, at uh, at closed North Seca Trials, um, and then go back to Queens, where he uh, will will hibernate until uh, the middle of May, I think. Okay, so ball control, Bobby. Uh, Robbie Kemp. Uh, <laughs> A right, beach but, player that I played uh, North Seca Trials with. Yeah, but you said Robbie Ball Control Bobby Kemp. Yes. yes so he's a ball control we, guy. Can we please make that nickname stick? I, I would like it. I would like it too. I'm not sure. Did you guys win sure or something? But, but. Finish third. Okay. So what do you mean May? You guys don't know if you're even going to get an event, or do you know? We don't, but uh, I. Oh, I he means I, Robbie won't touch another beach ball until the month of May. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he uh, he lives in Queens. Where where is Queens again? I I'm not Kingston. too touched up. No, we don't life. know. I, oh, we don't really know. Yeah, who who knows where Queens is? Show some not respect to the city. Well, he uh, yeah, he'll he'll be going there, and uh, he'll I think he'll show up <laughs> some <laughs> sometime in the future to uh, to play some more beach eventually. It wasn't okay. a twelve-hour bus ride, but when Tyda tells this story again, he met his partner on like the day before trials, who took the twelve-hour bus. No ferry ride this time, Garrett, but uh, they did meet, decide who was playing left side, right side, and then Bobby Ball Control took over, and they they came away with a bronze medal. There was no medals actually given away at the trials. He just finished third. But okay, I need a few key pieces of information. So we're gonna celebrate Ball Control, Bobby. Um, Bobby. So player of the week. 
but there's some qualifying pieces of info that I need here before I'm really going to buy in. So, how many teams were in the tournament? That's not important right now. It's it's incredibly important <laughs> right now. So I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess how many teams. I'm gonna guess four. There were and more than me, four. That would be more. incorrect. You're clearly not following the the Pass and Dimes uh, Instagram page because it was extensively covered. No, no, I'm I don't even follow exclusively it. covered. Yeah, because Josh, I don't watch that po- unless he posts something about sharp cuts, which he doesn't because he's a lazy, you know what. If you guys give me some sound bites, maybe I'll make time to clip it. But uh, yeah. What do you mean? Who's you guys? Us? Me and Tynan? We don't have time yeah, for I that. I clip stuff of me. I'm not that witty. I don't put myself on the internet. I usually try to show off the guests. No, I agree. You're not witty at all. So I, I get that. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> coming on, I'm coming in hot, Josh. So, and the other piece of qualifying, so five teams in the tournament, you came third, pretty good. So, the other qualifying piece of information is, did he carry you? There or were, did you carry him? There were, it was it was a, a rather equal partnership, I think. I couldn't have done it without him, and he couldn't have done it without me. There were there were moments we were both being being targeted, we were both struggling, so, uh, yeah, we helped, we helped each other out. So, Kev did play out of his mind, Garrett, but he pulled the ultimate, like, I can't believe a defender just did that. So they ran a trap play and the guy hit into it and Robbie must have dug it. I don't even know if it would have hit the bottom tape of the net. Like it wasn't that high. It was like one of those, like it's in your lap, but you like dink it. And then he does the classic defender thing of yelling, go! Like it's like this really important ball. So Tynan saves it and they give a free ball and they lead, later leave the point. And the reason I remember this, it was a third set in their semifinal. Uh, and it was like a really important point. So they run the trap play. They get the ball, like hit into Robbie's lap. And he does the ultimate fumble, but then yell at your partner thing, which I think every defender who's ever played beach has done. Like dig it three feet off the ground and then you know, come! Oh, that that was an absolute classic of mine. One hundred percent of the time, I only yelled like that when it was a questionable one. When it was a clear dig, it was just up. But when it was a questionable, it was go, go, get, get there. Because you got I mean, you got emphatic uh, go whenever uh, someone dinks one baby line over my block, and uh, I'm not I'm not falling very fast. So, whoa, I'm, whoa I'm you're committed. yelling, you're yelling, go. When somebody I'm, dinks it, baby, baby line over you? Not like arms reach, but like step arms reach where I'm not falling quite fast enough. Yeah, I'm. if I'm your partner, I'm also yelling, go! <laughs> hey, that's, that's how it's fast. What are you yelling at me? Go, go, you go! <laughs> and then you just land and yell at each other with a lot of hand talking. Come on! Yes, and then hug it out. That's yeah. That's just how that's beach volleyball in a nutshell. That's beach volleyball. Anyway, nobody does time. anything except yell at each other and then hug it out. That's beach volleyball. Exactly. In a nutshell. Anyway, okay. players for, of the week for the calendar week from last Saturday to the Friday after that. Ball control. Bobby Kemp was my player. Okay. Okay. What What's your nickname? Total Pylon Tynan. Currently unnicknamed. They can also comment that. Giant Unsolicitedly, they can Danette. nickname Tynan. <laughs> Un- unsolicited. <laughs> unsolicited nickname Tynan. Oh, wait, no. This no, I meant you could give him an unsolicited nickname. Not that his nickname should be unsolicited. I think that people should feel free to give him a nickname was the point I was making. Yes. No, yes. I knew that, but it's no, actually funnier. It's actually funnier if you meant it the other way. Because you're a not terrible is, nickname. Yes, it's a, that. So in the OUA, Garrett, we've played in some cool like home gym atmospheres, and the announcers get going. Are you trying to save this? Like, to no, say- I got to share my best and worst. The best nickname I've heard all year was um, Kyler Code from Brock. They call him Cheat Code. I was like, okay, that's like pretty witty. I can get on board with that. Uh, Alex King from TMU. They call Your Highness, and I just can't get on board with calling somebody Your Highness. I think that's the lamest nickname I've heard. So just for the, the fans out there, if they could comment below with best and worst nicknames, I think you know Kyler the Cheat Code from Brock is is pretty up there. But his name is Code. Yeah, so they just re- added the word cheat in front of it. Like, it wasn't that witty, but it's like it's pretty good. Yeah, my personal favorite nickname is Milkbag. <laughs> Who earned that? <laughs> it's a great nickname. It, 
No, it's like, a, you know, old guys in the hockey change room. You call one of the guys milk bag because that's what his, that, when he takes off his shirt, that's what it looks like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, that, what? That's my, is that inappropriate? I hope not. No, no, I just think that's. Our yeah. American, our American friends, or actually people from not from Ontario, I guess, don't get that. They go milk bag. What is a milk bag? They don't know what that means. We have we have milk bags out east. I okay. Grew up, grew up on the uh, a good one point three liter milk bag. There you go. Okay. He knows the contents. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Let's get to really the favorite is the clowns of the week. Um, yes. And I'm gonna go last because I think mine might spark some conversation. So, I but it might not. If it doesn't, I'll just be sitting there embarrassed and scrambling for another topic but so who, which one of you guys are going to start work in reverse order I'll, sure. I'll start. go ahead Tynan. go ahead so unsolicited. I, I i learned today that uh the uh the, the norseka confederation has has now uh signed a contract with with who josh uh mikasa they're, they're a ball mikasa. manufacturer he used yeah. the new uh the new the new Mikasa ball for uh, for all Norseka events this year and presumably in the future, and so my clown of the week will be uh, Norseka trials as as a whole for uh, for using the wrong ball. Oh, <laughs> spicy! Does it count if at the time it wasn't the wrong ball? We made a decision based on the information we had at the time and ordered a bunch of new balls. Um, for for, for I, training I it, and trials. I think it absolutely counts, especially if I can bury Josh in any way. Did you have any input into the decision, Josh? So, Garrett, I'll, I'll take you on a journey here because this was actually going to be my Clown of the Week as well. So uh, I'm naming myself Clown of the Week. And the reason I am, Garrett, is because you know that Norseka does use a different ball. They use the Molten. But as Volleyball Canada, like, we don't have an unlimited budget. So, like, we have a few volleyballs, right? Because you only use them when you go to Norseka's. And those are, like, maybe there's, like, three Norseka's a year. Maybe if you're lucky, there's, like, eight. And it's a totally different ball. So why would you buy a ball for, like, a special occasion, right? So... I advocate and I say, you know what? We've worked so hard this year. We had more athletes attend trials. We've had more athletes uh, attend a March break camp, you know, nationals registration. I was like, there has to be room in the budget. There has to be like, it's a different ball. It plays different. Maybe it's worth one point. Maybe it's worth 10 points. Like I'm laying it on thick being like the ball plays different. You can't deny it doesn't lay different. So Tynan's right. We get the budget approved and we buy 15 brand new mint condition Moltons awesome garrett i'm so over the moon we're using them at training we're using them at trials and then i get an email that uh norseka releases a press release that now until the year 2030 garrett they are now going to use the mikasa ball so i like i died on this hill i wanted molten volleyballs i thought i was being athlete centered we needed this specific ball garrett only this specific ball was going to win us norseka medals and then norseka announces you know psych we're going to switch to the Mikasa ball that you already own. So thanks for wasting your money and advocating, Josh. Thanks for using, like, the one card you had to play in your whole Volleyball Canada career. You blew it on something that didn't matter. So, therefore, I, I'm the clown here again. That has to be a clown move. Yeah, I, I want to I, – I, you know, I, I sympathize, Josh. Uh, you know, I, I, really feel, I really feel for you. I really feel for you on that because that's tough. That's tough. You had no way of knowing. <laughs> you were doing your best. But – you blew it. You absolutely, you absolutely blew it. I mean, there's no, there's no way around it. I mean, that's just so tough, but absolute clown move. Can we sell them? Can we recoup anything? Would anyone like some gently used molten volleyballs that no league in the world uses to play with? Nobody in the world hey. wants this ball anymore. It's hey, the worst I, I, ball. <laughs> it sucks. We're going to have to start a Sharp Cuts League and play with the molten ball so there's actually a league who plays with this ball because I don't know where else we're ever going to see this ball again. It's a pretty fun ball. You can hit it real hard. And Stop I it, look Tiny. To, see, no, it plays tiny. differently. That's why I wanted it. It plays completely yeah, it, different than the Mikasa. No, it, yeah. it totally does, but stop with the it's a fun ball. No, it's a garbage ball. And Josh pushed to buy 15 pieces of trash. Absolutely. And before Norseka realized what was going on. Now, in hindsight, we can say how bad the ball was. It's gone. Nobody but you guys bought a fresh set. Ah. Oh. That hurts, man. I feel for you. I really do. That that sucks. But 
This is also one of the first times we've had a coordinated clown of the week because Tynan is saying, <sighs> yeah, we used the wrong ball. And Josh, you're saying, yeah, I bought all those balls. <laughs> I went to bat to get the wrong ball, Garrett. <laughs> well, but Again, hey. I, yeah, like you you used the, the balls you got in the tournament. We yeah we used to bat Norseka trials so molten is the official Norseka trials ball even though when you go to a Norseka you'll use the Mikasa so it's a trials ball only. <laughs> when did they announce the switch? Uh, today as we're recording or yesterday so they they were like say well yesterday was Tuesday February twenty eighth and the trials were the twenty third and twenty fourth of February so like again I went with the information I had at the time Garrett. Yeah, I got a question Tynan's clown here a little bit because. When you're playing the trials, did you know this wasn't going to be the ball? Only in hindsight do you now know that. We did not. We did not know. We were under the assumption that it, it were to be the ball. Oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. It's a new ball. Yeah. It's different. The extra layer here, Garrett, is like as a federation, we still don't own a volleyball. And if, if Volleyball Canada doesn't own one of these new Mikasas, what chance does like – Trinidad, Tobago, or St. Lucia getting a box of balls before we do. Like, I just don't think anyone's going to have this ball before the first Narcica. Yeah, and neither will they, Josh. They won't even have the ball, probably. They're going to have to revert <laughs> So we're going to use molten. the Molten. We're prepared. Yeah. They're going to have to, dude. They're going to have to use the Molten because they're not going to be able to get the ball. If you can't get them, what makes you think Narcica is going to be able to get them? <laughs> this is going to pay off for you, Josh. You're going to be, month and you're gonna be Team Canada rolling 15 balls deep at the Norsecas when everybody's got their two or three of the new ones. And yet the Norseka has none uh, until Norseka goes, Oh, Hey, can we use all your balls for the tournament and ask all the teams <laughs> to use their balls, which could happen too. Gosh, what a mess. I think Norseka is the, is the league leader in sharp cuts clowns of the week. They, they may be up to five times now having gotten player clown of the week. This isn't actually Norseka though. So, yeah, this is more me, but when Norseka has gotten it, it's rightfully so. Let's be honest. I, I agree. Okay, let's go to me then. Um, so my clown of the week, and I, I need you guys to help me because I think I, there's there's a clown in here somewhere or multiple clowns, but I'm not really sure where to place the blame. So let me describe the situation to you. So in in Canada, generally, the college and university leagues have been like the next step after club and high school. People graduate high school, they go to college or university, they play volleyball. Some of those people then go on to play pro, and then some of those people go on to play on our national team. It's kind of like the, the pathway, right? So, you know, you want your Canadian talent to be playing in those leagues and the best player, you know, whatever. But what's kind of interesting is that in the college league, in the Pac West, and I'm noticing this in other leagues too, because there's a few players in the U sport now who are in this situation is you get these, these old guys and I say old, they're not like gray hair. Well, maybe they are, but they're like, you know, older than 25. So they're, they're like not older than unnatural fifth or sixth years. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like they're at the end of their, they're a fifth, sixth year guy with COVID. No, they're older than that. So they like started even much later. So these are men who've, grown into their bodies like and their men playing in these leagues and dominating like just absolutely dominating these basically boys <laughs> right like that that's kind of what it looks like so the other piece is a lot of these are international students who've come in from other countries and some of them have even played pro and so they're coming in and they're dominating as older athletes from a different country dominating our, you know, the, the domestic leagues in Canada. So, you know, for the example, in the Pac West Provincials, I think five of the six All-Stars are Brazilian and are older students. Um, I don't know the, exactly their ages, but I know some of them are 26, 28. Um, they're, they're older guys. So I don't know who the clown is. Like, is it the old guys? But are they just doing what they can? Is it the system here? I mean, it, it, it makes it so that if you're a coach, in order to compete, you almost need to have one of those guys on your squad. But then you've got to convince 
a 26, 27, 28 year old guy to come to college? Like it's a weird situation and I need I, I feel like I want somebody to blame, but I can't quite place my finger on it. Yeah, without knowing them, it makes it hard. Like, I, I know the OCW player of the year was Sebastian Lethbridge. He was, like, another older student, but he went back to, like, study something. So, like, I'll give Seb some credit because he wanted to finish his education in a, in a certain area. Like, if you're there for the right reasons to study and you want to play sport while you're there, I think I'm fine with it. If you tell me that, like, five of these cats are taking general arts and they're just there to, like, play volleyball, then I think, like, that's not the intent of what, like, a school-associated league is. Like, um, no, but so it probably depends. No, no. That's the example, though, Josh, is that's the thing. What does that do to the league? Guy comes back. He's doing his fifth or sixth year, potentially. After a break, he's grown into an adult, is still in good shape, comes back, and is dominating. Player of the year? Hello? The player of the year is an, like an above it, an older student. So that means if you want to compete, you got to go and get a guy like that. Like, how are you going to compete with that otherwise? Well, I, I mean, I, I would love somebody from the, the great province of Quebec to complain about this because I feel like the RCQ has been doing this for years because Sage Up doesn't count as eligibility and they've had 24-year-olds win the player of the year, 25-year-olds. So I, I feel like that conference has been doing this for years. But uh, I, I would have a little bit more patience if they're actually doing it because of the education versus like, you know, there's some people hanging around the OCAA who are there to play volleyball. Like there, there's people who did their five years and they didn't really graduate with a piece of paper. Like that stuff really annoys me. But if, you, if you're playing school sport and you're a full-time student and you're there to like study, then like... Like, I can get on board with that. The international student thing, I thought that was the intent of a year of pro counting as a year of eligibility, that they didn't want people who've, like, played pro France B League their whole life and then come over to George Brown College. Like, I don't think that's the intent, right? Yeah, but, but we're not sure that's a rule, Josh. On the women's what, side, it's not. The men and women have different rules, for sure. And what's the, and what's, what's the definition of pro? Ooh, good one. Because like maybe you are from a, a town in, in in Europe and your pro club is like your youth club because some of those are tied in right it's a community based club like yeah like it's a very gray area and I, what it ends up leading to is like the coaches in the Pac West they're looking they want to compete they're looking to go get international hired like not hired guns like they're trying to help these guys out who want to come great but they got to go out and convince basically this international player to come and be their their main dog. So especially in the Pac West, I don't think it's rare to have international students. Like I feel like a couple Australians have won Player of the Year over the years. Is there not a cap now that you can only have two, if not three, internationals three. a year now? Yeah, it's, it's three. three. It's three, but that I mean that doesn't really change the thing. The league is not dominated, like it's not populated by these players, but they're definitely, generally the better players in the league, and not just internationals. Even like I, I don't know a group that you know say that they're on an island by themselves. No, it's the and the old guys too coming back, right? Because like they're often older students, more mature men. Like you know, like imagine if I went back at after I finished playing beach and go back and did my last year, and I get to pick my team. I just want to go back and play. I pick the best team and go and yeah, just I, dominate. I, yeah, that goes really? against like fairness. I'm trying to think of like a rule that would solve this, but also a rule that doesn't have like unintended consequences. Like the CHL a few years ago said, we're not developing any Canadian goalies, so we're not going to allow import goalies anymore. But what happened was it lowered the level of the league so bad that like now four, three games or seven, six games because Canada didn't have the depth to replace all these international cats. So they eventually reversed that rule. So, I mean, they, they started this rule with the best of intentions, but it like ruined the league in a way. So uh, I know there is a cap on international students, do you cap it at age that you're only allowed one overage or over the age of 24 or whatever you feel like an undergrad athlete is like uh, i don't but know that's I, weird I, I keep talking i don't know if you have any thoughts i don't know like how to solve this but i as a coach i think i would be annoyed if i lost to a team of like 27 year olds who all had beards and families who were just there to play volleyball and win uh, a pack west medal like hey i i wish i could just chime in and solve all of all of volleyball's problems but so uh, do it do I, I don't believe I'm 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 quite capable. Uh, Josh, no, the theme of the show is unsolicited advice. So just shoot. What do you got? The the only things that I I really had to contribute were uh, being from Nova Scotia, regarding the RSEQ. So thanks, Josh. Um, and also the I was just randomly aware of the international like cap, um, of of two or three athletes it is now. But I don't really know what you can do on the like in addition to to a. Uh, cap on an amount of of international athletes because you'd you'd always be limiting someone 
there's always there's always a uh, there's always someone with some weird circumstances that could be older or could be coming back for that you wouldn't want to to block out from from participation right. or whatever. Yeah, there's, like what do you do? Like outs- and, and here's outside of the, the the number cap being like to to to, to promote Canadian development. Then I I really don't know what you can. Uh, I we're getting caught up a little bit on the international thing. That's not it. They just tend to be older than a student coming out of high school. That's the mm-hmm. big difference. Like, cause they're not necessarily dominating because they're, they're good. They're coming over cause they're good, but they're older. And I think that's yeah. the talent gap is that they just so, older. So something that, that I've considered, or I, I guess have thought about dreaming way in the future is if I have a, a reasonably decent, beach career around on the tour for for a few years or more um and then i decide i, I want to go back to school and, and use some indoor eligibility like that that might limit me the age uh an age thing because if i stop playing beach at like 26 but i have all my my indoor eligibility and i want to go back to school i want to take whatever whatever program to to get out of being a, a professional beach athlete then you you you'd, you'd be limiting me by my age Right. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's not, there's not really a great solution. But what I don't like about what it does to the culture of these leagues, right? And I think it's creeping in a little bit to U Sport. I don't think it's coming quite as in there yet because it's a little bit more expensive to go to school at universities often. So even if they, you know, they, you know, it costs a little bit more money if you're going to give these guys scholarships. Um, the, the restrictions are a little bit tighter on grades and education and things like that. So, but I still think it's creeping in, um, to you see some of these international guys and some of these older guys really leading, leading the league is it just changes the dynamic, right? Then you got like coaches recruiting and, you know, they're, they're looking less domestically and, you know, they're looking more internationally. They're looking at guys who aren't playing in high school. Like it just changes the vibe. And now the teams who win are the teams with coaches, not who can develop the best players, but who can just go and find the the big horse who's going to come and help them get it done, which is like kind of kind of interesting. Like I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing, but in terms of like parity and development, it just definitely changes the game. Very strange. So are you saying that Douglas College is sending you to Cuba to run a kid's camp and find these athletes? Is that the, the next step? <laughs> no, I'm they can saying fly Douglas, you to, College, to championships. Douglas College is they giving me a full scholarship to, to come back and play. Oh, you're year. announcing your comeback right now. Oh, no, okay. I'm not. No, I, <laughs> no, 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 not announcing the comeback. See, I'm 30. So I'm getting to the point where like, it's maybe yeah, I'm too old even to just to, to bring it back. Like, I better get in shape and see if I could still give it a go, Josh, for any team. Could I do it? You know? Like Yeah, I think I that twenty five, twenty six range is probably a prime for a lot of athletes and they're they're gonna use it in the CCAA. You know, like could I come back and participate in a closed Norseka trials with Tynan and, and dominate? You know, like could it be possible? Hey, isn't the uh isn't the the, the competitive age for Beach a little little older anyway? Could use a, a grizzled vet by my side. Is that is that what I am? Am I a grizzled vet, Josh? If I is would would you describe me as that? I think you're you're leaning towards that way. Like like let's say for example, your first day at the center, and you see a young guy sitting eating lunch. Would you feel the need to go over and give him some unsolicited advice, Garrett? Um, I was I've never been like that. I never have been like that. But you know what? Now that I'm thirty. <laughs> I feel like I've seen to some do things. That. You know, yeah, I've you, seen you've been some around things. the block a few times. Now I have to just give unsolicited advice whenever I go anywhere. That's just the name of the game, isn't it? It's a switch no. that flips. Yeah, it, it's like that. If we were partners, it'd be a steady stream of unsolicited advice, us both pointing at balls, yelling at each other, and nothing happening. 
hey. you know the funniest one i heard the other day Garrett, to have an excuse to give unsolicited advice and i don't think she meant it this way but uh, i was talking to heather bansley just about like partner dynamics and she's like well the defender should tell the blocker what to do they can see the whole court the blocker can't see what i'm doing but i can see what they're doing and i was like that just like triggers me to the point of like when you ever you see partners fighting it's usually the defender be like put your hands here or do this or do that like the blocker never gets to coach the defender it's always the defender telling what they should have done yes and and don't <laughs> forget that tynan here's another piece of unsolicited advice always listen to every single thing your defender says trust that's them true. implicitly that's true that's, no, that's it's not all true ever will do Defenders are dumbasses, all of them, 100% of them. Go out there and block it. That's the advice. How about that for unsolicited advice, Josh? That should be you in practice. Now just go do it, man. That's one of your better ones. Yeah, just go block it. Yeah. That's a John May. That's a John Mayism right there. Oh, like classic John May. People would come up to him, they'd ask for solicit. So this is solicited advice. It's not unsolicited advice. They come up and say, oh, I'm really struggling with this. You know, I really, yeah, you know, I'm really, really having trouble reading the block. Just get my hands, just, just go and block it. Like, just, just go block it. Oh, I'm really having trouble, like, you know, reading on the dig. Should I be, you know, this way, foot technique? No, just go dig the ball. Yeah. Just keep it off the sand. Yep. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah, like, great. I'm glad I came to ask this person for advice. This is really actionable. <laughs> Hell no. John May will give me the answer that I've been searching for my whole life. The action yeah, is it, just block the ball. Or just yeah, take like the he, ball. He is. He's trying to like, you know, it is, but it's just on the surface level, it's so bad. But deeper, it's good, which is. But then a third layer, it's actually bad. You know, it's like. You, you would, like a, a sandwich of some kind. It, it's a sandwich. It's it's a goodness sandwich. Yeah. So, so, the, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, if you're still with us, thank you so much. Thank you so way. much. Thank you so much. I don't know what we've done to earn your loyalty, but we don't deserve it. Um, comment down below. Thank you all for the comments. We had a few good comments I wanted to cover today, but we're running out of time. Um, so we won't cover them, but they're all long and thoughtful and and great maybe we'll cover them next week josh who knows will there even be a next week we're not sure um but uh, thank you whoa what yeah if there's no next week then i've been the guest on the finale i'm honored okay we're gonna have one episode next week <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm not that special <laughs> Well, comment down below how special is Tynan and let us know um, if you're still listening. Like we need to have some way to like distinguish the folks who are still listening without asking them to just comment because that's a bit of like a because if they comment and say I've been listening this long, then they're calling themselves out as somebody who's listened this long, which is like for it's like, what are you doing? Like these guys are idiots. Not if you're idiots. Nova Not Scotia. Idiots. And you've decided to watch or listen to me for whatever reason, then comment. You'll have comment. I have a feeling that people check out the page. They probably read the title and they're going to see Titan's name and they're going to click on it. There's people who are like selective downloaders on, on our audience, Garrett. And I respect that. But uh, I think Titan's going to get us some clicks. This one's okay. it's going to go crazy on the East Coast. Okay, great. We maybe should just become an East Coast focus show and just bury Josh. And that can be it. That can be a great cycle of content. We just cause... had Becky Dorsey. Now we have Tynan. Like, we should probably get Costa on the show eventually. Like, I think we, sh we should probably hit up, like, all six people who love volleyball out on the East Coast. They don't hate yeah. you as much as they should. I think Luke does. <laughs> <laughs> I think Luke hates me the appropriate amount. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let's get the heck out of here then. Like we're, we're lingering on it. Nobody is still listening. We're hurting our numbers. Tynan, thank you so much for joining us, man. You're a hero. Last minute guest It's great to have you. Some great conversation. Thanks for being a good sport. Um, Josh, your stupid hat and your stupid headphones. Um, thank you for joining us. And thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Hit that comment down below, subscribe, five star, all that great stuff. And we hope to see you 